When we started making Tavern Cast back in 2005, we were the first World of Warcraft podcast that ever came out. Well, there was World of Warcast with Starman. So we were the second World of Warcraft podcast that, no, there was another one. But I can't remember the name of that one. Well, we were the third and by far the best World of Warcraft podcast that ever came out during that time period. Now, in the intervening years, uh, the guys would keep bugging me. Bryce, we got a new tavern cast. It's so awesome. Let's do the show again. Well, we've been talking about doing this since, since basically we stopped. We keep teasing each other around like, you know, hey, maybe we should start it up again. Maybe we should do this again. And, and everybody was just, there was always somebody that was a little too busy, a little like not quite all in. And so we kind of never really got going. And I'm like, do you have any idea how much time that took? Do you have any idea how much time it took to edit that show? And they're like, we don't care about your time. We don't care about what your needs are. We need you to do the show. And I'm like, no way. No, not gonna do Tavern Cast. Hard pass, we're done with Tavern Cast. Every time we go out to dinner at the Earl, it was like, hey, let's, you know, maybe we should do the show. Maybe we should kind of just, let's do a one-off. Let's just send one out in the ether and see what the reaction is. Eloy and I were talking and we decided uh, now's the time. I'm not really quite sure who introduced the idea or why we introduced it, but there's an artistic element to doing Tavern Cast that we've missed for a long time, that really since we stopped doing it. I love doing this show. I love all that goes into doing this show. I love how pretty much it sucks my entire life away and makes it so that I can't really concentrate on anything else outside of work. So basically I go to work and I come home and I'll be editing Tavern Cast until like the next morning without any sleep when I eat breakfast and have to go to work again only to come home and why am I doing this again? This is why I'm jazzed because we always have fun. Question is, what's my history with video games? Um, I've always liked video games ever since I was a kid and you know, I played the Atari 2600. I never had one, but um, I would always go over to some kid's house that had one. I think I had a ColecoVision back in the day, which was super fun. The graphics were great. Um, not as many games on it. We've always, I came from a household that was always into sort of the road not taken for whatever reason. Um, so we had Beta, we had a Mac, we had ColecoVision. That, I think you get the picture. In college, I got into MUDs, like this concept of a remote player, Zork-like interface, and it was a massive multiplayer type of thing. And I sunk days into that, like literal like weeks and months, like, I stopped playing that game and kind of quit cold turkey and uh, it's kind of a stayed away sense. Like I did a little bit of Civ. Because I had a Mac, also the video games were very limited. Um, played Wizardry back in the day, which was a great one. The Dark Tower, also great on the early Macs. But that's what led me to Blizzard is because they were one of the few developers that made great games for the Mac. You know, I, I'm not the biggest gamer there is. Uh, my first MMO was City of Heroes, it was a superhero MMO, but my biggest memory was back in the day watching Karg playing EverQuest on his job. He had two monitors set up, a little switcher in between, and he'd have like his work stuff on one monitor and EverQuest on another monitor, and as soon as the boss would come around he'd be like, oh crap, and he'd switch his monitor so that the, you know, EverQuest would go off and his work would come back on. And that's when I knew MMOs were the wave of the future. You know, I was actually in school when a friend of mine told me about World of Warcraft. He said, you got to try it out. And I remember trying it. And my mind was blown at how immersive and gigantic the world was. I played World of Warcraft over the years, off and on. Uh, every time there'd be a new expansion that would come out, I'd play it for a week or so or two or, or five weeks or, you know, a couple months or until the next time the expansion came around. And then, then you know, I'd play it for another week or... Or more. So, so yeah, I guess I never really left World of Warcraft per se. I just stopped playing it in a hardcore way. Uh, but I play other games too. Uh, I play Overwatch a little bit. You know, now I'm pretty much a Reinhardt kind of guy. Uh, I, I'm a tank. I can stand there. I have shield, and I can just take damage until you know a Reaper comes behind, or or McCreary, or uh, a Widow. Or until pretty much anybody comes behind me. And then I die. 
The other game that I've been playing a lot of and still takes me to now is Overwatch. I can sit down, I can spend an hour playing Overwatch and just having fun with it without getting irritated, without uh, you know beating myself up too much, and, and actually getting good, feeling like I'm getting good at it. Um, my main is Moira, in case anybody plays Moira. I play Hearthstone all the time. I'm ranked. I'm ranked in my own in my own game. I usually get a couple of ranks before the next season. I get that card back and I move on. But that doesn't the card back mean you're elite? I think it means you're elite. So I'm an elite player on Hearthstone. They say you never can go back home again, but Classic WoW definitely feels like going back home. And now seems the right amount of time. Why play Classic WoW now? Because it's awesome. Because it's a big, fat, nostalgia, like, syringe right into your vein. It's like, it's like vanilla meth, you know? And you're just, like, hitting up on it again. It, it's, like a, it's like a dose of virtual Azerothian heroin that you just can't... You know, these, these metaphors are not very good. I probably shouldn't use those metaphors.